From time to time, I get asked what audio gear do I use? So today I'm gonna to detail what headphones, what speakers, and also what other gear I use. And also for today's video, Mayflower Electronics sent over their ARC, which is a DAC, amp, and ADC solution all packed into one little box. If you guys remember the O2 DAC amp solution, this thing promises to do exactly the same, but also add in a very clean mic port. And I'll let you guys take a quick listen to that. So for this audio test, I'm using my V-Motor Boom Pro plugged directly into the unit itself. And of course, with that, we'll get onto Peter Pepper versus Chucky Chuckles. Now, Chucky was chucking chocolate cakes with cherry mixed in, and Peter Piper was piping on his peppers and packed into a pipe, which he was smoking at the same time he was eating the cake that was thrown at him. So that's a big feat for Peter. Also on paper, it does boast some impressive figures, even beating that of the O2 DAC amp solution. And after using it, I will say that the sound was extremely accurate. The bass is full and doing a frequency response curve. You can see the numbers. The response curve is just perfectly flat. It's really good if you guys are looking for a neutral sound. There's also a DSP button on the front, which will boost the bass, which is good for open air bass anemic headphones. And also when we're going into the crosstalk levels, they're really good on this unit. So all the numbers check out. However, something like this, and you're probably wondering, well, I've got onboard audio, and onboard audio has come a long way, especially in the last few years, though it's still not as good as something like this. And two areas that I can identify where you would want something like this over onboard audio, even high-end onboard audio, would be that bass frequency roll-off, which does happen when you use cheaper amplifiers. This unit has a perfectly flat frequency response, really good if you wanna power your headphones, especially sub-bass, you'll feel it coming through. It does make the experience a lot better. On my Fidelio L1s, this thing was pumping the bass, very detailed, very full, absolutely love what was coming out of this thing. Though the second thing that you wanna be careful of, especially if you're using onboard audio, is a frequency or an impedance mismatch from the headphones to the amplifier on board your solution itself. And what this means is if you're using frequencies, say for instance in the seven kilohertz range, this is a very common culprit. You can get spikes that go 10 decibels over what the frequency response curves will actually read. And what this means over time is that your ears can get severely damaged as 10 decibels is over three times the power at that frequency as to what your ears should be hearing. And it's also for this very reason that I do highly recommend people use speakers the majority of the time, only use headphones if you have to, or if you just want to enjoy that particular pair of headphones with that DAC amp combo. Though getting back onto topic with the Mayflower Arc, this will be replacing my shit Modi and O2 amp solution. It's one unit, very compact, comes with a five volt DC charger, which will work all around the world. You also get a USB cable included. Though if I had to critique one thing, it would be those cables. I'd like to see it maybe powered off one cable if that's possible. Though besides that, it's a very sleek unit. You can carry it from build to build and get cheaper motherboards as a result. So you don't have to worry about what onboard audio solution they're putting on motherboards. You can just carry this thing from build to build and have exceptionally good audio. Now some last things about this unit itself. It does come with an optical in, so you can use it with consoles, PS4, for Xbox One, this thing will do that. Clean audio both on output and on input with your microphone. RCA outs to carry out audio, mic out port to carry out that mic out if you're into streaming. High and low gain outputs for different powering needs. And on the front of the unit, it's got the volume knob, which also doubles down as a power button. When you click it to the left, it'll power off. Click it to the right, you can then adjust your volume and it will turn the unit on. There's also the DSP button, which stands for digital signal processing. And in this case, we'll change or add color to the sound. In this case, it just adds a bass boost. So it's great for open air bass anemic headphones. For instance, like the HD 595s that I have here. So now with all that aside, it is expensive. It is $250, though if you are into using headphones and you do use headphones a lot, then something like this is an easy recommendation, especially if you intend to use headphones for a long time. I can highly recommend this thing, clean audio out, clean audio in, and of course it packs it all into one unit, very convenient, and the numbers that it's boasting are very impressive as well. Though what about the other audio gear that I use? Well, I currently have four different headphones here at the moment, 
and I couple three of those with a V-Motor Boom Pro to make them essentially a headset. These are the V-Motor Crossfade LPs. These are great for editing videos. They give off a very neutral sound. It's actually quite boring for listening to music and playing games. I actually don't like it for that. I like it for studio work, editing videos, great phenomenal headphones, actually very revealing as well for a mid-fi can. And then for an end user experience, this is a very controversial headphone. These are the Fidelio L1s. And I have noticed that some people just hate these, but some people like myself absolutely love these headphones. The physical comfort is amazing. And also the sound comfort or the balance of sound is so good on these things. The bass is a little bit overpowering, very detailed, and then the mids are there. And then the treble fades off a tad. So this just makes for a very good end listening experience that I can just wear these things for hours and hours and just enjoy the sound that's coming out of them. They are a semi-open headphone too, so they do have good good 3D imaging too. The one that note, I wouldn't dare use them for video editing as they are colored. And if I did use them for video editing, you could see some really imbalanced sound coming out of my videos. For instance, music would just be overpowering or the voices would just suddenly spike and kill your ears. And I don't want to do that to you guys. So I use my Crossfade LPs. But the last of the headphones that I use are the Corsair Void RGB Pros. These are a wireless solution. So very convenient when I need to use wireless. They have a tinny mic on board, which isn't the best but they do come in at a pretty good price point. And of course, they do offer a very decent sound, especially for competitive gamers looking for good positioning. I found these things were very good when I was using them in CSGO. And then on that note, the last pair of headphones that I have is the HD 595s from Sennheiser. These are exceptional at 3D imaging, which will allow you to position people in games just like the Corsair Void Pros do, but these will do them a little bit better in my opinion, especially coupled with a good DAC amp solution. I absolutely love the sound coming out of these headphones for gaming competitively, though they are a bit bass anemic, which is a result of them being an open air headphone. So now that we've got through that, people are probably wondering why don't you have high end headphones like for instance, HD 800s from Sennheiser or Bayer Dynamic T1s. Well, actually in the past, I've ordered both these headphones in and tried them and returned them after two weeks and one week respectively. I quite simply thought that they were just too revealing. Both sets of headphones were incredible, but they were too revealing to the point where you could hear people breathing, you could hear lips moving in songs. It just wasn't for me at the end of the day. I do appreciate a good mid-fi can. That's personally for me. And when it comes to audio, it's a very subjective thing and at the end of the day you guys should let your ears do the listening and choosing. So what about the speakers that I use? Well I'm currently using the Sound Blaster X Katana which is a very good unit though it is quite expensive. You can get this for around about $300 plus. Though on that note it does offer very good 2.1 sound. It does have very good bass, has RGB lighting which probably raises the price of the unit itself but it also has a 32-bit DAC on board. I've tested this thing in the past, reviewed it and it does put out some pretty good numbers. And now it's time to flip the output switch and turn it into input. And for recording, what microphones do I use? Well currently I'm using the H&M Sound MicroLav. I picked two of these up on B&H Photos for 70 US dollars. Now these usually come in at around $150. So they're a very expensive lavalier microphone, but the benefit of something like this is that they just have such a good sound without me even changing the bass or the treble or the mids. They just give a very good sound straight out of the microphone itself. Something that's easy on your ears, something that's really good for me to edit as well. So something like this is a really solid microphone and it comes from an independent brand rather than Audio-Technica, Sony and Sennheiser and stuff like that. So very good price performance for what it is. I actually got a second one for when I'm going to do interviews in the future. So what about a condenser microphone? And if you guys have been on twitch.tv and watch streamers, you'll probably see that all these guys are using these big microphones and they sound very good. They're very rich. Though they are a double-edged sword in that they are very sensitive too on that note. So if people don't have them positioned right, they will be popping a lot where that's where your pee goes boom right into the, the microphone. They also pick up pretty much the whole environment that they're in. So they are a very sensitive microphone. Though if you are into condensers, and I use one when I did the tech lounge and that will be coming back, that live stream tech show that I did have to stop due to my internet connection. Though when that comes back, I will be using my V67 G, which has the green and gold colors because I'm Australian. Green and gold's like our national colors. And it's also a very good price performance microphone. This thing sounds very rich, got good bass. And if you couple it with a cheap preamp, 
like an Edirol, I'm using the UA25X, which has a compressor on board, you'll get a very rich sound for under $100. So with all this gear, guys, I will put links in the description below for you guys where you can check out what I use. Though if you have any questions or comments about the gear that I use, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. But as always, I love reading you guys' comments. So if you have recommendations of your own, if you've found some really good gear that you wanna share with people, whether it be on AliExpress or Amazon or eBay, then drop a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys use. Love reading your comments as always, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.